Hello, I am Mudita, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today, I want to go over the new blueprints I've made for the most common amounts I transfer by rail. When using trains, I highly recommend using a storage container as a buffer. The belts directly connected to the freight platform will pause during the roughly 28 second long docking animation. These blueprints are what I use to load balance on the unload side. So these are my unload balancers. I'm sorry, I had to. I'm getting old. Alright, so here we have what is probably the easiest out of all of them. This is the 300. So let me show you how I make this. There's a couple things I wanted to keep in mind when building this. The first is that freight platforms are two foundations wide. Or in length this way, basically. So I want to keep this blueprint within two foundations so that I know that I can tile this next to as many other freight platforms as I have. So the first step is I'm going to start with a merger. For some of these, you don't actually need the merger because there will only be one belt cycling back into the industrial storage. But for a lot of them, they start with a merger. I like to give myself just one meter of space so that I can change the belt speed if I need to, or at least I can see that it's working basically. We've got the storage unit, and then we're going to go ahead and place a splitter. And same thing, I want it one meter across. You could put it there and you can still place the belt, but it's much easier for me to be able to change it in the future if I just place it that one meter farther out. If I'm transferring 300 parts per minute, that means at a minimum I need to use a Mark IV. Now this will transfer 480, and that's the key part and the purpose of all of this. If I don't want 480 parts per minute for a shorter amount of time, and then you have to wait for the train to drop off more, this can give me a nice steady flow of the 300 that I'm feeding on the other end. That's the idea. So there's a couple ways we can look at this. So 300 out of the 480 would be 5 eighths. I could design a load balancer to do that, but there's another way we can go about this. As long as there's enough parts in the storage container, I can count on this being a completely full 480 belt. Now, if I use all three outputs of the splitter, that would be 160 per minute on each belt. Now we can use that fact to kind of manipulate it because if we're putting less than that, it will be able to keep these two belts completely full. So since both the Mark II and the Mark I belt are less than 160, I can count on these being completely full and I don't even need to use a smart splitter. If you feel better about it and you wanted to use a smart splitter just in case, you can very easily switch this to a smart splitter and then have any and any and overflow if you'd much rather do that. I haven't had any issues with just using a regular splitter, so since they're cheaper to make, I just use these. Alright, so 480 minus the Mark II minus the Mark I leaves us with 300. And then what I like to do is just take a display sign, go up two notches, H to lock it in place, and then nudge it back one meter. And you'll just clip that little sign post into it, but I don't really mind. And now I can label it so that that way in a month when I come back and visit the train station, I know exactly how many parts per minute are coming out of here. And on display signs, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can use just nice big numbers, which I really like. And there you go. All right, so that's the 300. And the beauty of this is all you have to do is change this from a Mark IV to a Mark V. And now this is made for 600. Oh, one last thing I forgot. So we have the Mark II and the Mark I, so that's 180, so this needs to be a Mark III belt. And that's all you need to do to change it from 300 to 600. I don't get to use the 600 one nearly as often because transferring 600 parts per minute, unless the stack size is really high, like 500 parts per minute, the train is probably going to need to complete its round trip pretty quickly, or you need multiple trains. But maybe you'll be able to get better use out of it than I will. All these blueprints will be on my Google Drive, the link will be pinned in the comments. Let's go over 400 parts per minute. If I want 400, that means again, I'm gonna be using a Mark IV. So that's got 480. So now I need to subtract 80. Number of different ways you could go about this, but in my opinion, this is probably the easiest. I'm gonna place a merger here and another splitter right here. And again, I just like to give myself that one meter so that I can see the belt, make sure it's the right speed. And I just need to make sure this doesn't get any wider than the two foundations. All right, so again, 480 divided by three would be 160. 
So if we use Mark III belts, we can do 160 here, 160 here, 160 here. If I take this 160 and I split that in half, that would be 80 here. And 80, I believe we don't need this merger. Cool. 80 right back into the storage container. So 480 minus 80 leaves me with my 400. And last but not least for today, let's go over the 100 parts per minute. Again, we're going to start with a splitter. If I want 100, that means I'm going to deal with a Mark II belt. From here, I'm going to go ahead and place a splitter to the side one meter out so that I can see the belt. And then lastly, I need one last merger, and we're going to place that right in front of this splitter one meter out. All right, so I'm working with 120. So if I split that in half, that would be 60 here and 60 here. If I take this 60 and I split it three ways, that would be 20. This would be 20. And again, we don't need this merger. That would be 20. 120 minus the 20 leaves me with 100. And I know I said I wanted to keep this within two foundations, but thankfully it's only going to save the box that it actually takes up. So as you can see, when I lock it in place, it's right on the edge of this foundation and it actually only takes up one and a half. Meaning even though I saved this one a little off center, it's still plenty small enough that I'll be able to tile this next to as many other freight platforms as I need. All right, before I end the video, I just wanted to give a real quick demonstration on how I hook these up. This is one of the areas where I really like to use an underfloor logistics and it's for the train stations. So instead of having to take up the same amount of space up here, I'd much rather use the same kind of space just down here. So for that, I would put a floor hole right here and just go ahead and delete this belt. And if I wanna be doing something like say the 100 parts per minute, means I need to be using a belt and lift that are faster than that preferably by a decent amount, unless the train rounds trip is really long. So for 100, I would use at least the Mark III. Put that there. And then on the bottom side, I am going to drag the lift to the bottom, and then I'm going to go up one, two, three, four. Well, I think each notch is a meter, so four meters. And we can check. Yep, that's in the right spot. Go and grab my 100 terrain load balancer, lock it in place, and realize that I was a little off. And now I can get this right in the spot that I want, and I can go ahead and place it. As you can see, the parts don't automatically start moving. That's because this isn't actually attached. So I want to take my Mark III and then connect it. And then from here, we can drag out a Mark II and make sure that should be a nice steady flow of 100 parts per minute. Until they get to the end of the belt. But looks good. And that is going to do it for this one. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. This was pretty much all of the really easy ones that I could think of that I use pretty often. I'll be working on some of the more complicated ones like this 200 parts per minute and the 500 parts per minute. However, I'll probably start using some smart splitters with some of these. This idea was thanks to a comment in one of my recent videos, so I really do appreciate this. And if you have any ideas or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll look forward to those. And thanks for watching.